All right, welcome to this episode of my playthrough of Horizon Zero Dawn. We are in the Project Zero Dawn facility uh, underneath uh, Sunfall, where uh, General Harris, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States, has given a presentation saying complete global extinction is inevitable. It cannot be stopped. Um, cracking the shutdown codes would take a half a century, and they have 18 months. It's just, it's not possible. But we still don't know what Project Zero Dawn actually is. Uh, General Harris said that he would leave that to Dr. Elizabeth so uh, Sobek, uh, but we have not heard her presentation yet. I am at, uh, We're currently in the screening area where candidates were screened after viewing that presentation. I imagine through that door is the second presentation where they are told what Project Zero Dawn actually is and what they're going to be doing. So let's get going, okay? CDO2 data intact. Initiating playback. Elizabeth Sobeck. You've heard the bad news, and it's all true. The Pharaoh Plague is devouring the biosphere. Life itself will cease to exist. But does that have to be the end? What if we could give life a future? What if we could build a kind of seed from which, on a dead planet, life could blossom anew? This is the aim, the hope, of Project Zero Dawn. To create a super-intelligent, fully automated terraforming system and bring life back from lifelessness. What would such a system require? At its core, it would need a true AI, fully capable of making the trillions of decisions necessary to reconstitute the biosphere. An immortal guardian, devoted to the reflourishing of life. We call it Gaia. Mother Nature as an AI. But that's just the core of the system. She will need to be surrounded and empowered by a comprehensive suite of subordinate functions. Think of them as extensions of Gaia's mind, each dedicated to a specific purpose. Now these aren't AIs, but make no mistake, each presents an engineering challenge more profound than anything the human species has ever before attempted. Hardware that preserves and then gestates the billions of seeds and embryos from which life will be reborn. The construction of underground facilities to hold it all. And that's just the start. We don't have to build the entire system. The beauty of a fully automated terraforming system is that it can build itself. Now over the days to come, you'll learn how all these functions, all these pieces that you'll be working on, fit together. How we'll race the clock to execute our harvest initiatives, write the software, build the tech and the facilities. How we'll lock it down and seal it up before the inevitable occurs. But even more important, you'll know how it doesn't end here. How Gaia will generate those deactivation codes General Harris talked about, and build the transmission arrays to broadcast them, shutting down the feral robots for good. How Gaia will not just build, but imagine any conceivable robot it needs to do its work across centuries. From detoxifying the Earth's ravaged atmosphere and poisoned seas, to the regreening of the Earth from cryopreserved seed stalks, to rewilding the Earth with animal life. And then, when all that is done, how a new generation of human beings spawned at cradle facilities around the globe will partake of Apollo. The vast archive of human knowledge and cultural achievement from which they will learn of us, our world. And most important, how not to repeat our mistakes. It's not an impossible dream. It is within our grasp if we work tirelessly and stop at nothing to achieve it. We can't stop life from ending. But if you will help me, help Gaia, we can give it a future. Join me and help make that future real. The whole 
Earth destroyed, but then remade? Yes. By a machine. A machine of creation. Elizabeth did this for life, for us. But why Hades then? If it was part of Gaia, how did it end up in the wreckage of a pharaoh robot? And why does it want to kill me? And Apollo, the Archive of Knowledge, what happened to that? I'm as confused as you are. Maybe the answers lie ahead. Holy shit! <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, that is a hell of an ambitious project, and brilliant facing the challenges that they were facing. Um, you can't stop it, so wasting resources trying to stop it is just a waste of resources, as redundant as that statement is. So, if you can't stop it, what do you do? And that plan is is genius. Terrifying, but genius. And those are some damn good questions Aloy asked. Because yeah, I saw Hades as one of the subroutines of Gaia as well. And so why is it a trying to kill Aloy? Also curious is um, the pharaoh uh, robots were named after Egyptian culture and mythology, like uh, the Horus, Scarab, the uh, Kopech, or Kopesh, pardon me, um, and the Elizabeth's project is named after Greek mythology, Gaia, Hades, Hephaestus, things like that. Very curious. Make your selection. It's a text data point, so pause if you want to read it. Here's the first bit. There's the second bit. There's the third bit. See you on the other side. Yeah, I, I was wondering uh, how they treat people who wanted to leave after being given that information that they were working so hard to keep secret. That is a, a harsh, but completely rational set of choices. Um, and not an easy decision to make for the people being presented with it. Uh, sorry, just noticed in data points, it was it's marking all of these things that I've ha received. I just want to mark them as viewed. Oop. Wrong button. Um, I'm just going to uh, change the battery or change my controller because the battery's low. I'll be right back. All right, so let's keep going. It's another scan me thing here. Counselor guidelines two. Oh, uh, it's another read me thing. So here's the first bit. Here's the second bit. Here's the third bit. See you on the other side. Yeah, more good guidelines there. <laughs> The game wants me to go that way, but the map tells me um, one thing I've noticed that the compass at the top in these ancient ruins it has these little box symbols for like these data points. So it tells me there's three this way. Of course I'll do it. To be given the opportunity to rebuild what I uh, the, the the damage that I well I, I don't feel worthy of it, but but I, I will do it absolutely. I want to stress that this was never about your culpability. Uh, it is to me. 
Dr. Sobek, Margo, they were smart to get out of Pharaoh when they did, but, but not one of us took it as a warning sign. It, it just told ourselves they weren't cut out for the BTRI cabals. That's the, the better than rapid innovation. A, a better at competing, better than the next guy, a, a better killing machine. <laughs> Isn't it just amazing how a century and a half of science fiction did nothing to swerve our species from the path of doom? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm done with that life. I mean, I, I will work hard, twice as hard to earn this, but for my family to have a place in Elysium. I never thought I that there could be uh, atonement. He seems like an interesting person. Full of regret, understandably so. If you're still nauseous. No, the inhibitors have kicked in. I can't feel the back of my tongue. I wish I could tell you I'd believe in this, but the damage is too great, too extensive, too complete. With all respect to Dr. Sobek's work at Miriam, no. No. Life doesn't always find a way to keep going. Sometimes it never comes back. Like Syzygy East. Like the Congo. Like Timor. Like us. That's our reward? A buried city full of terminal patients waiting out the clock? You grow old together, with your loved ones, in safety. I don't have loved ones. I suppose I could start a family? I'm afraid not. All inhabitants of Elysium will be medically sterilized. <laughs> a habitat capable of sustaining a starting base of 2,000 individuals for up to 100 years is a huge challenge, Dr. Albert. If the population grows instead of diminishes, everyone will be dead inside 30 years. I knew it. I just couldn't bring myself to say the words. I'm sorry. Finish it. Medical euthanasia. I want no part of this. I just want it over. I see. Protocols require a 48-hour waiting period, after which... Yeah, it's expected that some would choose that. <sighs> Is he to make sure I behave this time? Security. For your protection. Would you like to discuss how you're feeling? Sure. I'll tell you. Surprised. No, flabbergasted. Like my old man would say, flabbergasted. That vein pumping in his forehead. I thought... I thought you people were just completely underprepared for a spaceflight project. But now I can see it's worse. Much worse. Sobek is a total fantasist, a, a dangerous fantasist. This kind of blue skying, it's... <gasps> Jesus! I'm sorry we wasted each other's time. I'm ready to leave now. I'm afraid that's not possible. <laughs> Everything you're talking about here isn't possible. I recommend you read the documents regarding your options. I've seen enough. I'm getting out of here. Oh, what are you... You don't... Uh, get your hands off me! Fighting back is also a fully expected response. Alert. Medical wing inaccessible. I guess this is the medical wing. <laughs> There's a purple icon here. Stranded Shackles. What are those? This mysterious item is valuable only to the most curious merchants. Shackles made from an unknown smooth material. Interesting. That's not on the list of collectibles either, but I've got two with that symbol. And they have the two and three markers, respectively, so I wonder... 
I wonder what the purpose of those are. Uh, looks like a way up, maybe? I don't see anything here, though, so... Back this way. And deeper down the rabbit hole we go. Saving these for the trail. water but it is I thought it was a bottomless abyss and it isn't it is an abyss but it's not get her we've got company. whatever you do don't die now never mind Does not look like they are standing down. Yeah, no, they are not standing down. They are fully prepared to just shoot at me when I pop out. So... Take advantage of the focus ability. <laughs> Since, uh... They don't seem to want to follow me back into his little alcove. go. I hashed it out with them, what the point of Artemis was. I made it clear I wasn't on board for a global zoo. We haven't exactly proved ourselves to be great custodians in the past few thousand years, so the idea of a reconstituted biosphere well, it's horrifying, isn't it? A complete horror show. We have no right to take a best guess at this stuff. But the alternative? Nothingness. For there to have been all this, and then... Nothing. And with Charles Ronson running the show, I respect him. He's got a passion to him. He's hot-blooded. So I said I'll do it. I'll put my all into this, literally. When the project is done, I'll take the medical option, thank you. The counselor said I might change my mind. I told him that he didn't know me very well then. For life's sake, I'll do the dirty work. But I want no part of this pathetic, attenuated future on offer. I'm an outdoors man. Never did like the feel of solid-state lighting on my skin. And a wee bit of a claustrophobe, anyway. Probably shouldn't jump down there. It's probably a bad idea. Unless I can find for sure that there's a way back up. And this is glass, can't make it through there. It's a bit weird how many video game characters can't uh, handle the obstacle of glass. <laughs> 
zero dawn. It is art, in a way. An expression on the grandest scale. But there is so much unfairness. Why was I chosen? Was it decided by committee? By algorithm? My family will be saved because I happen to graduate in art history? Is this right? Dr. Souvé? Christina Souvé? Yes. I met a man, another historian. His fields are Bauhaus and the New Materialists. But he once attended one of my talks. Another unfair chance. Of all the many people in their auditorium, that we should both be here now. And yet, I feel more accepting of my fate. No, it is not fair, not at all. But for the sake of my family, for the sake of art. Art is alive. It must be able to speak from beyond history, an echo in the future, not perish into oblivion. This opportunity, I must do this. I like her outlook. Now, those lame FBI black hats at Mockingbird back in the day, I enjoyed schooling them. But maybe I went in too hard on this poor counselor. She was cute, and just going down a checklist after all. Couldn't expect her to see how ridiculous Zero D's ambitions are. God's own budget thrown at a kid playing with a hologram sculptor? Palms up, honey. I'm just calling it like it is. Hey, look, Mom, I'm making nature. Now, if nature is so important, why not let nature take its course? Extinction? That's natural. Zero dawn? No, ma'am. That ain't. Heck, it's so unnatural it'll be called an abomination back home, and you know it. That's why you're hiding it. Meanwhile, my little honey of a counselor, she's munching the inside of her cheek. Bad habit. She chewed one of her nails, too. Just one. Not your day, was it, little sweet pea? Saw her quota slipping away. Said, I assume you intend to decline the assignment, Mr. Tate. <laughs> you kidding me? 18 months hard labor in exchange for 30 years lounging around Elysium watching porn? <laughs> Sign me up. He's a despicable character, but I imagine they knew that. I'd have to ditch something. And just wanted him for his skills, not his personality. Power's down. Is there another route? I've done this before. Just need my focus. No, I don't want the fire striker. I want that. There's the power line. It goes this way. Um, okay, it goes down, over, up into those banks there. Okay, cool. I gotta go the wrong way first because you miss stuff otherwise. <laughs> Here we go. Another one of these. Need to find the right configuration. But first, need to get this data point. Hey, I'm done with Brett's incompetence, okay? Somehow, he managed to install an H emitter node backwards. Everything's in reverse. I don't get paid to clean up Brett's messes. If you want it fixed, send him up to storage for a new emitter, not me. Parker out. Hey, I'm done with Brett's incompetence, okay? Somehow, he managed to install an H emitter node backwards. Everything's in reverse. I don't get paid to clean up Brett's messes. If you want it fixed, send him up to storage for a new emitter, not me. Parker out. Good to know. Aloy said something there, but I couldn't hear it because it played again. So basically, just need to remember that everything's in reverse. So this guy here... Uh, 
So left, up, left, down, right. So left, up, left, down, right. But everything's in reverse. So it should be uh, right, down, uh, right, up, left. OK. Oh, it's this one that has the settings transposed. Never mind. So let's just flip all these around. Should check the door nearby. These guys, the power's out, and one of them is missing. So these guys power that door, so let's uh I imagine through that door I'll be able to activate the other ones, which are what do the main door I'm trying to get through. Found one. Looks intact. Tained one emitter. And there's also something over here. With a bunch of stuff in it. do the trick. Now let's get that door open. And recognizing that this one is backwards, uh, as evidenced by the Pharaoh logo being <laughs> at the bottom. So the question is, do I start from the top and just reverse them, or do I start from the bottom and recognize that they're upside down? I'm going to start from the bottom and recognize that they're upside down and see if that works. So. Starting from the bottom, it's pointing up, which means it should point... This one should be down. There we go. The next one points right, so it should be left. Then down, which should be up. Left, which should be right. And then the last one is up, which should be down. That did it. The door should have power. Now to see what lies beyond it. That was the trick, is uh, recognizing that the Pharaoh logo was at the bottom and upside down. Not So you had to start at the bottom and reverse it, not start at the top and reverse it. But I'm going to call an end to the episode there, uh, just because I don't know what's on the other side of that door and it might take a while. So you know the drill, click over there. And join me next time where we uncover whatever, whatever's in that next area. See you then.